name is Brian Wagner. I live in Tigard, and I'm out here because, well, the Clean Water Act promised to stop all discharges of pollutants into the waters of the United States 20 years ago. 20 years later, that still hasn't been done, and the toxic mixing zones is one big loophole that allows that to happen. Uh, dilution of pollution is not a solution. In June of 1972, the Willamette River was declared a river restored as the cover story of National Geographic magazine. This was under the amazing leadership of then Governor Tom McCall. At the time, the director of the Department of Environmental Quality, L.B. Day, stated that our eventual aim is to divert all wastes from the river and I'm convinced that it can be done. Maybe not tomorrow, but we're moving in on the problem. That was over 30 years ago. Fast forward 30 years and the problem is still with us. Many areas along the Willamette are unsafe to fish and unsafe to people. Toxic mixing zones in particular pose a serious threat by allowing dischargers along the river to dump toxic pollution into the river at toxic concentrations. you bring your child out today to the rally? Um, well, he goes where I go. I thought it was important to come down here, so I thought, you know, expose him early, even though he might not remember it. <laughs> and so you think keeping toxics out of the here, river yeah. are important? Yeah, I mean, it sucks that I can't, you know, me and my friends, we have to tell our kids, you know, don't go in that water because, go door to door and, and especially don't swallow it, you know, it's toxic, don't eat the fish out of it. And we want to try to clean it up for our children so that they don't have to tell that to their children. I was shocked to learn that there are seven toxic mixing zones around the Willamette Falls in my very own community. Companies are legally allowed to dump lead, mercury, arsenic, chromium, aluminum, and other toxins at levels far above what the DEQ considers safe. These mixing zones are less than a half a mile from our community park where children play by the water, families recreate, and fishers fish for salmon. One of my children's favorite activities when they were younger was to walk along the bluff in Oregon City to go to Willamette Falls. We love to go and feel the spray, the cool spray coming off of the falls on our face. I didn't know then that those sprays contained chemicals that were dangerous to my children's health. When it comes to cleaning the Willamette River, Oregonians are paddling upstream against the current of polluters and the politicians that are allowing them to dump toxics into our waters. The Sierra Club has collected more than a thousand public comments to the governor, and we will be taking these, these comments urging the governor to clean up mixing zones on the Willamette on a, on a relay over the course of three days, traveling 72 miles in kayaks, canoes, and our fishing boat upriver from Portland to Salem. The great thing about it is that it combines the three like Sierra Club standards, which are to enjoy, explore, and protect the planet, you know. And this we're doing all three. You know, sometimes we get so caught up in the protect part that we don't get the time to go out and enjoy it and explore it. And this one here we get to do all three at once and really see, you know, what we're we're talking about.
this river should be as, as clean as possible and we can't change what's happened historically in the past but we can change what we're doing today and I think a lot of people are under the impression that there there is no longer any direct dumping in the rivers that most of the damage is historic but it's still going on so we're here to uh, deliver some petitions to Governor Kulangowski and ask him and the DEQ to enforce the Clean Water Act and clean up our rivers. It's really calm and peaceful and you see osprey and eagles and you know otters and you just experience you know what a wonderful ecosystem it is and you know you're thinking well I've got my bottle of water here that I'm drinking and then the river is the water and my body is more than 50% water so you start to make all those connections. The governor has said publicly that he wants to stake his whole legacy as governor of Oregon on cleaning up the Willamette River to restore the vision of Governor Tom McCall. But when it comes to doing the, the hard things to make that happen, like cracking down on pollution being dumped by industry, being dumped by cities and their wastewater plants, he's not willing to, to do the hard thing and to make them ratchet down their, their pollution. So we've had a tough time with it. We're really sort of bumping our heads against the governor and his staff. And uh, we think that this type of event, with its creativity and its, uh, its difficulty, will really get their attention and make them, make them do something about mixing zones. Uh, I'm Bob Reese. I'm a full-time fishing guide and president of the Northwest Anglers and uh, Guides Association. Formerly, I guided down the Willamette River. Why not on the Willamette anymore? Well, I used to guide on the Willamette, but I got a little tired of people asking me if the fish are safe to eat out of the Willamette. So, Nat, this is a popular fishing spot, and there's seven mixing zones right here. That's right, seven toxic mixing zones used by these two companies, Blue Heron Paper and Westland Paper. People are fishing in them. Probably don't know that they exist. Do you get the sense that anglers in general are aware of the presence of toxics in, in the water and in the fish that they're going after? or is From some of the people that we've seen angling on this trip up the river, uh, I think if they had a better idea of what uh, some of the resident fish contain in their flesh, they might not uh, pursue those fish. There's another guy here. Two guys. Got something on the line. Yeah, I might have a fish on. There's a uh, health uh, advisory on page 12 of the fishing regulations that talk about uh, what species not to eat in a particularly target resident fish. Um, anglers may be worried about some of the sturgeon uh, and certainly some of the non-sport species that anglers pursue on the Willamette River. It says right in the synopsis that you should limit your take of uh, your intake of fish from the Willamette to about eight ounces a week and you know anglers just aren't used to hearing that type of uh, language here in Oregon we have uh, you know we're known for our pristine waters and our healthy fish uh, this is something that we would expect maybe out of the Great Lakes region but it's a pretty large disappointment that we have to put up with this here in, in our state and in the Pacific Northwest. This is the conclusion to a 72 mile paddle relay up the Willamette River. We have paddled and we've worked so hard and we're all pretty tired and a bit sunburnt because we love this river so much and we wanted to send a strong message to the governor, to the legislature, to our leaders here in Salem that toxic mixing zones on the Willamette River pose an enormous problem to the health of our communities, to the fish that we eat on our dinner table and to the quality of life that we enjoy and that's the hallmark of living in Oregon. And the fact that this state knowingly permits the discharge of these toxins every day, every year, is simply unacceptable. Now, 30 years ago, the Willamette River was the cover story for National Geographic magazine. It was heralded as a river restored under the leadership of Governor Tom McCall. Here we are, 30 years later, speaking to our current governor and asking for leadership in the style of Governor McCall. 
to clean up our river, to take action now, to show leadership, to have courage, and to have vision. Unfortunately, what we've seen thus far have been empty promises and plenty of excuses. We're looking for more action. Hi, my name is Karen. I'm a volunteer with the Sierra Club. I'm a middle school teacher, a science teacher, and we, we did a project on the Willamette River. What I found for each of the eight groups was that the most dirty, gross colors of brown, green, that would be called by Crayola probably sludge color or something like that. And I asked them, I went around to each individual, each individual group, why do you think it's going to be this way? And they said, nobody cares. And I said, it's your future. You can make it however you want. And they said, nobody cares about our future. And I think that the, the message that all these postcards send to the governor is that the, the, the time to use our rivers as conduits for industrial waste is over. I think we're going to go now and actually deliver these public comments up to the governor's office in the Capitol, so I'd invite all of you to accompany us as we do that. There too. Let's get these things to the governor. All right, we have a thousand postcards delivered. <laughs> we kayak up from Portland to Salem, 72 miles upriver. Nice. We have a thousand postcards for you. Okay, great. We have shown that we're willing to go the distance and to paddle and to sweat for the Willamette, and we hope that your boss will too. So how did it feel? Oh yeah, yeah. Good. Feels good, and we came. We did what we set out to do, and hopefully. To get the governor to do the same. Yeah, so, exactly. Kick some butt this couple of days. It's been it's been a good time. The thing that we have that a lot of organizations don't is people power. Um, in Oregon, we have 23,000 Sierra Club members. Across the whole country, we have 800,000 Sierra Club members. So when you speak for the Sierra Club, it's like holding this giant megaphone in front of your, you know, in front of your mouth and speaking for the will of all these people. And this event is part of a new program in the club called Building Environmental Community. And the idea of this is to get back to our roots, to get back to, you know, getting people engaged in local issues.